This is from Anne Marie. She says that she loves the podcast. She listens with her seven months old baby. Um, that cannot be a good idea. And she says this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh, I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by its mistakes, it'll probably grow up all right. But there are some mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah, driving a car the wrong way down a motorway. Um, test, testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time... Does, does broken glass really taste horrible? These are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. Yeah, you can tell them that. But, yeah, but, what that I mean is, but what I mean is there's, there's certain things that... I just think that there was a kid who grew up in our, in our avenue, right, on the estate, who, when it was born, right, we kind of thought it's got no chance, this kid, because its man was, was a bit of a rumman. Um, you know, a rumman? The, Where, where's that? No, just, just like, you know, she liked going out and having a fag and like, having a drink and she's never at home. It's the one who had the, the horse in the house. Sure. Right? Which I don't want to go over. <laughs> sure. It's old news. It's yeah. out there, isn't it, if you want to find out about the horse in the house. <laughs> but uh, she had a kid, and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it, because it was a good-looking kid. Yeah. She was surprised, because, like, you know, the man wasn't that good-looking, the dad was a bit rough. But mm. it, it came out, and she was showing it around, around the avenue, going, look at this I've had. And she was, she was chuffed with it, because it's probably, like, one of the newest things she's ever had, because everything else was always sort of... Second hand. Second hand and what have you, but suddenly she's got this brand-new little baby, right? Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went... Right. And I'm not talking getting old, I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> it, looked, it looked rough already, right? And all that... That just happened, because... That's that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So like it, it used to, it had like a patchy head. Um, it's hair. It, it what? It had a patchy head. A patchy head. It's just sort of. Uh, sort it wasn't. Of it it wasn't a North American Indian. What do you mean? A uh, patchy head. Just just his hair was patchy. He used to chase sort of cars and stuff. <laughs> it's cars. It's, sorry. It, what, what do you mean? It just that's what he did for his. The, sorry. Did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is that at the end of the day. What is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now, I don't know what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm guessing he is. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least he can go, yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it, and you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid, can't you? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> okay, right. Did well, you? that time when I was in, in Wales <laughs> and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that, yeah. and I just picked up a big rock, right, chucked it off the edge, and as I chucked it off the edge, I noticed a fellow was walking down below. Jeez. And I missed his head by, like, inches. Now, I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or, like, off a cliff or anything. And right? it only took one man to almost lose his life... For you to learn that lesson. Yeah, but that's how you learn your lessons, yeah. isn't it? See, a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said, hey, Carl, what are you doing? No, but he didn't know I was doing it. I didn't say I'm going to chuck this off here. I just picked it up and chucked it. And, like, as I let go of it, I noticed a fellow was down there. You live and you learn. That's a little <laughs> mantra. All right. All right. You okay. live and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that, <laughs> but let it roam about. <laughs> Great. There's the advice for you, Anne Marie. I love that. Good luck. Just let your seven month old baby roam about. <laughs> Carl, a lot of people are absolutely fascinated to find out how you met uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend, of how long? Uh, ages. Yeah. Um, and they just they, they can't comprehend how, well, I suppose that there's any woman out there. Well, there's someone for everyone, isn't there? Yeah. That's always my, my thing. And it's reassuring, I think. You know, we've chatted about the face transplants and that. You know, there's a face for everyone. Philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's really unbelievable. No, there is someone for everyone, no matter what, what yeah. condition you're in or whatever. Yeah. Because um, there's a... I read on the email, someone emailed in an old Chinese proverb. Um, it's something about everything, no matter what it is, has got one talent. And that's the same way in a relationship, isn't it? That everyone, you know, there's always someone out there. And that I like the Chinese. There's another Chinese proverb that I learned on, on an email. Go on. Um, he who cuts the wood up warms himself twice. 
Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then someone sent in that one about um, too many Chinese cooks spoil the broth. <laughs> What, well, why is well that's I don't know I don't know, I don't know who slipped the word Chinese in there, but I heard it as too many cooks. Well, it was all it was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite on the same subject is um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean it's having a go at the camel and it shouldn't, but it's just you know it's just it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let you let twelve people in the room have their say it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee because everyone having their say, it becomes anodyne, it becomes compromised, whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking, which committee designed the camel? <laughs> well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, why would you request the ump bit? Because that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? I, this is, it? I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we've, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> and that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what, what they're doing. They were good years ago, in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. <laughs> well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw some animals at you and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them, OK? Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back, I can look at them and go, what are they doing? And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? What, what, how could you improve it? Like the camel, you'd go lose the arm. I'd probably, I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um... And, and give it some bones, because I don't understand all this. Getting in a jar is, is good. When does it want to get in a jar? It says... That... Well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. No, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones, but I don't know why it'd want to do that in the first place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've you've said you've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? Oh God, I you can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe. Um, what what are they adding to to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world, no, but is I it? Thought, but I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. A lot the, the, of... the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like... Do you think there's a lot of cheating, is that what you're saying? Oh, I'm just saying there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah, so and you want... You'd want you, you do, you'd get it down to, like, eight animals that represented all of them. So oh, OK, who would get in your, in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah... I would have gone like, hang on a minute. We've, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> Let it drown and have a clear out. <laughs> but he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything, yeah. to be fair to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job, for me, he's sort of manager of that job. So you, be, so you believe with Noah management. as well? You, well believe, you believe Noah happened as well and he built a boat big enough to, to cage two of every species? You actually believe that as fact, dear? Well, it's, it's out there in book form. Brilliant. Um, all right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Does that work? Thanks. Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey! You... <laughs> it was this um, airline and... Um, having a lot of problems and, and a what, lot of pilots the... too tall yeah the cabin was so tiny only bananas were allowed in the cockpit for fuel <laughs> anyway yeah. there, there was a lot of strikes going on right sure. because um i don't know what it was about it was over money or whatever yes. and the we'll get get someone that doesn't need money <laughs> yeah but but, well, but what else could you pay something in well rick i mean peanuts. Would... So, okay, peanuts or fruit yeah so anyway the the boss of the airline the, oh. he had like one pilot who he could trust right and that was his son Right. But the problem is, with a lot of these planes, you need two pilots. Of course right? you do. And he's like, if only I had two sons. But he didn't. There's no point harping on about it. Right? Sure. Is as, it, as, is it a, he runs a airline? 
Who runs an airline, yeah. But how many pilots are there? Because there must be loads. No, there's loads, but the problem is a lot of them are going on strike. Oh. And each week you can see that we're struggling here. We but how can they... Yeah. We just, just close it down. No, no way, you can't do that, no, Ricky. Can't, of course you can't. It's costing them a fortune if he closes it down. Yeah, it? but what, one plane's not going to make a difference in an airline, is it? No, 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 it's mm. all the planes. It's all the planes, mate. So, the son, he's mm. flying the planes and that, he's getting worried for his dad because of his business, it's falling sure. apart. He's like, anyway, listen. Well, one plane won't make any difference. Don't worry about it. We've found someone who you can work with. He said he's staying over near the sort of quarantine area where oh, all yeah. the animals are kept oh, and yeah, stuff. Right. Okay. They won't be looking in there. They won't uh, bother. No. So he's like, all right. Uh, but there's no animal you. that could be a co-pilot, that's why. I'll see you. Uh, he'll meet up with you in the cockpit. Like, he'll meet up in the cockpit, yeah, sure. So anyway, he gets in there. He meets them. At first, a little bit of a shock who he's going to be working with. But why? he's thinking... As long as I can keep my dad's business alive, I can Not keep with a one job. Plane. Everyone's happy. Then one day, mm. what happens is a little bit of a little bit of a problem. Oh uh, dear. Well, what oh. happened is uh, one woman who was on the on the plane got a bit peckish, right? Right. And said uh, said to the air hostess woman, said, oh, "I'm a little bit peckish. Have you got any sort of nibbles and that?" She went, uh, "No, I got got a sandwich." She said, "I don't really want a sandwich. You want something, you know, like the usual stuff that planes give out, just like nuts. a bag of nuts or something." Well, nuts, are, yeah. are they not giving those out yet? So no, they don't give it for some reason. She was like, "Look, we've <laughs> we've stopped giving out the nuts. We can get you That's a sandwich." Strange. And the woman's yeah. like, "I don't want a sandwich. Yeah. I just want some nuts." Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? A sandwich is quite a big meal, and what have you. I just yeah. want some nibbles. Want some nuts. Well, it's not, that's not available. So Done. I can't, End the story. Can't so she said, "Well, you're saying there aren't any nuts." She yeah. said, "But earlier, I saw you put a tray outside the cockpit." Right? It had a sandwich on it, two Cokes, and two bags of nuts. Right. She said, so you're saying there aren't any, but the pilot's getting Well, there aren't any now. That was the last two packets. Done. No, no. So, Let's go home. <laughs> well, well I'm, I'll go and have a word with the pilot myself, because you only put them out there a few minutes ago. He can't have eaten them yet. I want you, you can't go. No, no. I know, this is it. This yeah. is, she was saying, you cannot go over. She's going, no. listen. Yeah. I'm going to go over because no, I feel no, like I'm going to lie to. No, you can't. So she goes, starts, no, and, no and the pilot can well, hear all this anyway. chat about the nuts and what have you, and he's thinking, what's going on out there? Yeah. He opens the door. Yeah. Right? She gets a glance in. Yeah. The monkey's sat there with headphones. Fucking bollocks. <laughs> <laughs>